wrench, you need to remove uh, these four, these five thumb screws. This one here, this one here, this one here, this one here, and this one here. There's five of them on this. You need to take them off before you get to the belt. I'm, I'm going to explain the process for changing out the belt. On the, it's the blade belt. Um, these three, these three pulleys are actually connected. Um, that one there, this one here, and this one here are connected to three blades on the mower. And this belt actually uh, gives power from the engine to the um, to the um, mower blades um, because there's three. It's a 48-inch mower, and there are three blades on this. So the process to actually take this take this apart is pretty easy. Um, all you have to do is to unscrew this or loosen up that bolt um, so the pulley becomes loose so you can kind of move it or finagle it so you can get this belt piece uh, be from between the pulley and this little stop and then you have to also unscrew this to pull this out uh, there's a lot of slack um, so it should be pretty easy to do thing is before you actually go ahead and do it you want to take pictures of what it looks like and the other thing you want to really take a picture of is underneath you would also have to unhook it from underneath the moors it's kind of hard to see where the how the how the there's a pulley back here I'm pointing to it you got to pull the pull the belt off this pulley too of this one right here that I'm pointing to um, and there's a little stop. I'm kind of, I'm going to have to lower this to actually show you that. So you see that little bolt sticking out that my finger is pointing to? Make sure you find out how the, the, um, the uh, belt actually is routed inside the, inside the bolt that you see there. It's not outside. If you put it outside, it's not going to run. binding so make sure you run it to the inside take a picture of that too um, I'm kind of pointing to it and kind of see that but um, that's what you want to take a picture of how the how the belt is routed across that and it's pretty easy to take this out because there's a lot of slack once you remove the bolts let's say you put the belt back together on this what you have to do is you would have to tighten this bolt back up on this pulley and this one is a little more challenging. What you need is, you need a socket on the top here, uh, going across it, and you would need one going underneath it too. So I have a torque wrench here that I use with an extension, and you would have to go underneath and find the bolt that's underneath, underneath the more, uh, the bottom uh, bolt on this pulley, and then tighten it that way. Um, if you don't do that, it's just going to spin. You're not going to be able to tighten it. So make sure you use the bolt. It's kind of hard to access it. You would have to do it by uh, feeling it around. It's kind of hard to see unless you have a lift or something to actually get underneath the uh, mower. But this is the only way you can tighten this. And you torque it to what your manual says, the torque specs. Um, and then once you get that done, Thing you want to do is to check the tension on the belt and the way to do that is you would have to actually bring the lever down to engage the blades you would bring watch this as I bring this blade down this is the uh, blade engagement uh, engagement lever when I bring this down it tenses the belt you want to push that down and then what I use to check the tension is a fish scale they, the manual says check the tension between these two pulleys on the left side. So I put a little little uh, um, string over here to 
uh, hook up this fish hook too so I can check the tension. The tension is... So let me show you how I did this here. I put a little ruler down here um, starting at the one inch mark um, right below the belt. I tied a string to the belt. I have a fish scale right here that reads... Uh, the reading should be between 10 and 15 psi. Uh, 10 and 15 pounds for half inch of movement. So when you pull on the belt, it should not move more than half inch. And you take a reading on this fish scale. If it shows 10 to 15, you're good. And make sure you engage the lever before you do this. If there's too much slack in this, you're not going to get the good uh, proper reading. Um, so I would actually pull on this fish scale and make sure it doesn't pull more than half an inch. So you put a ruler down to actually measure that before you take it. There's a little nut here, and there's a little um, device here that you actually turn clockwise or counterclockwise. That's how you adjust the tension on the belt. And when you check the tension on the belt, make sure you engage the blade with the lever, um, as shown before. Um, if you do it this way, there's a lot of slack. See that? It's a lot of slack in the belt. Once you engage it, there won't be as much slack. Um, so that's the first thing you need to do. You need to make sure the tension is right. Uh, there's another thing you need to actually check on this um, after you do the belt adjustment. Um, that's the, the gap between the transmission and the lever here that I'm showing you. Um, to do that, you, you have to, again, there's a you've got to have a space of three to four millimeters between this transmission and this little lever here. So what you have to do is to again engage it. So now we're actually looking at the second adjustment we need to make. We need to make sure that the gap between um, this little lever here and this transmission. So I use a feeler gauge. It needs to be between three and four millimeters. Uh, I use a feeler gauge to actually stick it in there and check the gap and let's say it's not right you would have to actually pull this pull this toddler pin take this apart and then make the adjustment underneath here um, underneath the more right over here there's a little turnbuckle and that's how you do that see that little turnbuckle there you gotta actually turn this back or forth to actually adjust what the gap is here so that's how you make the second adjustment. Again, go by a manual as to what it says you should do. Most of the other mowers, other than Toro, uh, do the same thing, but you got to check your manual again. Uh, this is how I do it on my Toro, Toro Pro. For the last adjustment you need to make on the belt guide bolt, um, I'm going to zoom into the area where you need to make the adjustment this little bolt right here that you need to make the adjustment you need to check the gap but you gotta put the lever down before you do that you can now see there's a gap between this bolt and the belt and that's what you need to measure. It's supposed to be one and three eighths of an inch. I'm going to actually measure that with the ruler. The measurement here I'm getting is approximately a little about one and a half inch. That should be sufficient um, for this adjustment. As long as you don't have it get too close to the close to this bolt. If you need to adjust the bolt, you need to actually loosen the nut up here, which is kind of hard to see and then loosen this and move it back and forth. The bolt actually moves back and forth in here. So this is the bolt you make adjustment on. That's the third adjustment you make.